Abby Martin has been doing incredible work in this space for quite a while um, as re reporting on on Israel. And she went to a rally. It was an anti-immigrant rally in Tel Aviv. And mm. this is such a good example of how Zionism is a an extension of or a sibling of white supremacy and how uh, interconnected Zionism is with these systems of oppression, because this isn't just about Palestinians. This is about African immigrants in this instance. And you'll see here, I'll speak over, uh, if they're not speaking in English for the podcast audience, but um, this is, but sorry, what'd you say, Bradley? Okay, but we're all set here. So this is, uh, this is a clip that I think you might uh, have some thoughts on, Amanda. Okay. With so many politicians openly calling to expel these so-called infiltrators and whipping up xenophobic hatred against refugees, we went to an anti-refugee rally in Tel Aviv, where demonstrators burned an effigy of the mayor for allowing the children of refugees into local schools. And I'm a member of the Labour Party, and I consider myself left-wing, and I support the struggle because I think it's fair and it's just. They've come here with their practices and with their multitude of problems, and this cannot coexist. They must be removed en masse from here. What are you doing? Policeman, what are you doing here? Traveling around. You present somebody? Huh? You cannot get inside. What does that sign say? What does that sign say? It says, it says kids are not permission as a bypass for a non-permitted way of saying kids are not visas. It's not kids are not visas. So you want them to just stop breeding, yeah? This is not what I'm saying. If you stay inside the country in the rightful way, kids are not meant to bypass that. This Wait, is what we're but saying. But doesn't use a condom mean literally stop having sex? Like stop giving birth? I don't talk about condoms. I was saying you do not want a child with a condom. I think we get a sense here. So <laughs> that's a great, I mean, when he says I'm left wing, you know, within Israeli- What wing is that? There, yeah. <laughs> there is there are liberals liberal zionism is a myth for that reason because there's literally no way to be a left-wing settler colonizer and they're just saying what republicans say here in the u.s about anchor babies and stop reproducing mm -hmm. certain uh skin colors etc i mean th is well, that liberalism not is phony here too right so right, let's right you know there's that because they're exactly. like liberalism in america is like yeah it's all good as long as it doesn't disrupt my shit <laughs> yeah so i mean that's just such an you can't exist in an ethno state which is defined by preserving the purity of the state based on a religion or race and call your ideology left wing but that's probably him thinking like oh i want some more health care here in israel <laughs> but let's keep bombing the people three miles away from us until and and starving them to death well it's just it's very obviously you know on multiple levels a practice of discrimination, right? Like there's just very, like it's in the language, it's in the way the children are taught, it's in the militariz militarization, it's in the occupation. I mean, like there's no simply just like, oh, well, it's just these people who are being discriminatory, but that's not Zionism as a whole. Like it's a benchmark. It's it's literally an in, in inherent part of how they carry it out. And so you also look at this and you say to yourself, what do you people fucking want, bro? Like imperialism as a actual construct basically is like, we're going to come all over the world and we're going to take your shit, but we don't want you to come over here. So we just want you guys to stay where you are to let us come and destroy you and take your stuff. But what happens at the end of that? Like it doesn't end. Like there's just this constant um, parasitic practice and when I see stuff like this, it is very reminiscent of seeing white people with these like seething, angry faces, angry that Ruby Bridges is going to school mm -hmm. <laughs> with their with their children. Right. It's it's the same faces that you see in Europe who are watching refugees who have risked their entire lives and their children's lives to get on boats. And they're just like, how dare they come here? And the irony as a black person in particular is that those same people are so willing to take the cultures and the uh, the cultures and the spiritual practices and uh, the fashions of all of these people. Yeah. They just don't want the people. 
Well, and this it's is Israeli even... food. Well, this is Israeli <laughs> food. I've been to an it's... Israeli restaurant in the past. What is it? It's just it's Middle Eastern. It's Palestinian food. food. It's Palestinian yeah, it's food. It, yeah. and they change the names. You know, my stepmother is Palestinian. My brothers and sisters are Afro-Palestinian, and you know, you you really are also just by nature of that, I'm able to learn so much more just on a human level that a lot of people really haven't experienced yet. So like someone like this person who's saying like, I'm a left wing and I don't want them here. You ask them like, have you ever spoken to any of the people that you don't want here? Right. Like, I wonder. <laughs> like, well, we, we played a clip and maybe you saw it from a few months ago. It was very long form of a settler who went and went across the border with somebody from Gaza um and or m maybe it was the West Bank I forget in exactly. the West Bank in yeah. the West Bank yeah and he was like oh I had to overcome fear that I thought just by being with a Palestinian mm -hmm. he was going to kill me and then I realized just the daily humiliations that they face and I I understood why they would rise up and it was just like you two plus you, two. you see what Israeli society and how completely hermetically sealed it is i heard i was had a uh, was hanging out with a friend uh, who loves your show by the way on wednesday and she said she knows somebody who just was in israel for a 300 person wedding and there are idf soldiers commuting that were at the wedding because they were in gaza the day before and then they're coming back and just huh. in the wedding right and like they're that is how nor the nor society yes, there it is it's so <laughs> normalized right and they're, they're getting their nails done and people are starving to death right across, across the, border. the street yeah and there's just no no uh like i think mechanism within israeli society right now to educate people whatsoever there it's the indoctrination is is so deep and that's why i get so annoyed when i hear now liberals in this country talking about how ugh, netanyahu's really bad he's got to go no, no, no. <laughs> this needs to be deconstructed because it's much deeper than the big bad. <laughs> One thousand percent. I mean, by the way, Netanyahu the other day was at like an African summit saying, you know, uh, Theodore Herzl, the founder of Zionism, said that after we free the, the Jews, we're going to free the black people in Africa. And I'm just <laughs> like, no, <laughs> don't listen. <laughs> um, but I. I really don't. Um, and this is part of like the 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 cap being being blown off of like what you think of America, right? Because what you're saying, it's not in the exact same context, but it's like we live adjacent to homeless people on a houseless people on a regular basis, where we have effectively, as a society, there's an effective effort to say those people are bad. Be afraid of those people, right? Like there is a constant effort to vilify folks. Um, who may cause a discomfort to the comfort of capitalism, right? Or to the right. comfort of white supremacy or to just the comfort. Yes. Like just the comfort well, in general. I mean, the Jordan Neely story, I'm sure you, you oh remember. I, I Ben Shapiro uh, and, and other right-wing outlets, I guess, clipped my commentary on this, on, the pro on this program and we're going off about it because what I was saying there is that you know, people are essentially saying you can execute this mm -hmm. person because mm -hmm. of my comfort is more important than yes. his life. And we're seeing this in kind of the late stage capitalist uh, moment that we're in, which is that cities and places where people live are not they're it's they're not being designed for livability they're designed for oh. capitalism. So yes. people can come in from Long Island and see a show in New York and take a subway and not have their experience in Disneyland Manhattan ruined as opposed to like how are we tr choosing to make construct our society in a way where people can live as opposed to where people can make money and our urban centers are becoming these kind of pristine theme parks as opposed to livable areas for human beings and who gets pushed out well it's the people on the front lines of white supremacy and capitalism it's like there's just so much wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and you end up having to ask yourself, okay, so where do I, where is my role in this? Once I know better, I have to do better. So where's my role in this, right? So like I've I've come to realize I'm and I'm a bullhorn. Like that's my role. Like I'm the bullhorn for like, hey, if you didn't 
didn't know about this, this could be something you want to know about because a lot of people have this energy of like, I want to be a part of shifting things like this. Like, okay, I'm realizing this, that our cities are Disneyland's and they're not livable. How do we fix this? And that might be your passion, but you didn't even know that that was a space where you can actually create change. Here you go. And when I look at what's going on in Gaza and in the West Bank, again, it's deeper because it's not just about capitalism as much as it's also the, the, it's not just capitalism because they've also entrenched so many other devices to make it work, right? They've mm-hmm. entrenched racism in there. They've been able to effectively co-opt Judaism uh, as their method, um, even though there's swaths of Jewish people who are like, don't, don't put right. me in this. <laughs> I am not that. Um, but I, I, f- I feel like for so many of us, we've learned about colonialism in a very specific context. Now we are watching it play out in a very clear uh, version in Palestine. And then it comes back to us in the ways in which it exists in our own doorsteps, right? Like even when Mm -hmm. we think about like Katrina and the way that people in the ninth ward and Katrina were treated, um, you know, people calling them refugees. I'm like, they're in New Orleans. Yes, they're <laughs> like, Americans. <laughs> right. Yeah. What? It's um it's exact that you're exactly right on that front. Um, and I think also people are people have abstracted uh the Holocaust also from history of like uh you know, it's just never forget, but like, what is the context that allowed the Holocaust to happen? What is the context that allowed other genocides to happen perpetrated by the West? And how is this a continuation of the nationalism that was and, and the fascism of Nazi Germany, but just like in Israel now being done by a religious government there? And it's if you don't have that context, you just see things in silos and it's about groups but without any material basis underneath it well, the other part of it too is that it's like if it didn't happen to white people a lot of people just don't think right. it really happened i mean like we talk about the holocaust but we don't talk about congo and i don't mean like what's happening in the drc right now i mean like what happened in the drc with leopold right like we we, we discount the fact that there was a british massacre in Kenya like 50 years yeah. ago like you know like the Germans were in Namibia I mean like there's been I mean we don't do we even talk about Australia and the complete effort to genocide the uh Aboriginal people and right I mean go watch rabbit proof fence you know so like this the Holocaust was terrible it was absolutely horrible I shouldn't even have to say all of that but you know, where we are in the times we are. So I'm going to say all of that. It was not the first. It is not the last. We're watching another version right now. And exactly. um, it's it's always been attached to the preservation of some white bullshit. And at this point, I'm really like, who started this? <laughs> like, is this some extraterrestrial shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm like, because white people burn in the sun and nobody else does. So tell me, where did this start? Because it is so pervasive. It has been going for so long. And it started as like white on white crime in like the with like Vikings and the British. And, you know, then it, and, and, you know, um, Braveheart. And then it was just like, you know what, let's expand. Right. Let's, let's just let's do more. So at this point, I'm like, is this a human thing? Is it, I mean, I have, I have, I ask these questions all the time. I really hope that there is a interstellar version where I just go to the other side and all, everything's explained and I can like drop books in Morse code to the Amanda that's here now. That would be nice. To make, to like, <laughs> yeah. Be effective in helping. <laughs> um, 